Hello everybody and welcome back to a Royal Reader. My name is Cece and today I'm going to be doing my top 10 books of 2020. So I was originally going to do a top 20 books of 2020 but unfortunately I just could not figure out what I thought would make the top 20 and you know that's like almost a quarter of the books that I've read this year so we're going with the top 10. Let's start with number 10 and then work our way up to number 1. I'm pretty sure number 1 isn't going to be much of a surprise to anybody, especially if you have been watching my channel for a little while, but let's get started. So at number 10 we have Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. This is the first book in the Nevernight Chronicles. This was incredible. So. If you didn't know what this book is about, we follow our main character, Mia Corvair, and she is hell-bent on becoming an assassin to get revenge for her father. Her father was amongst like the political group um, within this city, and he, in her mind, was wrongfully killed. So she wants to kill all the people that are responsible for him dying, and she wants to become an assassin to do that. So we follow her as she goes to attend this really uh, sophisticated and secret sort of assassin school and she gets to learn all of the different skills that she needs to acquire, I guess. And along the way you discover a lot of like the political going-ons of this world and it was such a ride. The whole ending of this book, like the last 100 pages, was so intense and had me shook. It was crazy, okay? So yes, as you can see, I have tabbed it. I really enjoyed it. This was one of the first, I think, four-star reads of the year, so yes. Do be warned when you go into this, it is very gory. It is also very sexual, so please be warned when you're going to pick this up. Um, it's definitely not for a younger audience. This is definitely an adult epic fantasy, so yeah. So next, coming in at number nine, is going to be no surprise. <laughs> Um, that's going to be If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. I read this recently for a 24-hour reading challenge and I absolutely loved it. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. This is my first Dark Academia sort of themed novel that I read and I am thoroughly invested in that whole genre. I had such an amazing time reading this. In this, we follow our main character, Oliver, who is just getting released out of jail. The detective who worked on the murder case that he is involved in is retiring and he approaches Oliver and says, look, I want to know exactly what happened. I'm retiring. It's going to be off the record. Just tell me what happened. And then we have Oliver recount the sort of months leading up to the death of one of his friends. So you go throughout the whole novel not knowing who exactly was murdered and then you find out and then you have to try and figure out who exactly did the murdering and it was such an intense novel. The characters in this are students at a really like prestigious uh, university and they are all Shakespearean students so they learn all about the plays and they are actors as well so that is one aspect that I really enjoyed because they do talk to each other uh, with like quotes from Shakespeare's plays which I am a massive Shakespeare nerd. I have read Romeo and Juliet about five times and I have also acted in Romeo and Juliet. Um, it was like a sci-fi retelling of it and Juliet was a clone of five girls and I was one of the five girls. It was an interesting experience, um, but nonetheless, I really enjoyed it anyway. So this was just like fueling me with all of my nostalgia. And so, yes, I really enjoyed it. The twist had me shook. Number eight is also one that I read in the same 24 hour reading challenge and that is going to be The Ravens by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. This was such a shock for me and I was not expecting to enjoy it as much as I did but I really loved it. This is sort of a YA thriller mystery slash like urban fantasy I want to say because in this we have a sorority of girls who are in fact witches. So we have our main character who is called Scarlet. She is a witch and she is gunning to have like the sort of head sorority position. <laughs> I'm not entirely too sure what it is 
um, but she really wants to get that head position because, you know, her sister got it and her mum got it when they were in school, so she really wants to continue that and she has a lot of pressure from her family to try and get that. So we have her and she is also dealing with a sort of mystery that happened previous to when this is set with her and her best friend and another girl of the sorority. So there is an underlying sort of dark theme there. And then we have our second main character called her Vivi. So Vivi Devereaux is a girl who has just started going to uh, college and she didn't really expect to want to go into the sorority but she discovers that she is in fact a witch and then is sort of sucked into the whole world of being a witch and learning about her powers and things like that. That is like a brief overview of it. This does involve a sort of murder mystery that I don't want to talk too much about because I went into this not actually knowing about it and then when I discovered that it was a murder mystery I was like oh that's exciting so that really kept me intrigued so yeah this book was such a fun read. I read it like I said in the 24 hour reading challenge. Um, it was very fast paced. The twist at the end had me shook I was not expecting it. I was like, oh yeah, I figured it out. And then next thing you know, I didn't figure it out. And I was like, oh crap, that's what happens. Wow. So yeah, if you're looking for a quick sort of very fall autumn vibe uh, book for October, definitely pick this up. The witchy vibes are immaculate. So, coming in at number seven is going to be the first middle grade that I read this year, which is Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. I got this out from the library because I was just having major FOMO and I wanted to know what the gossip was all about. And thankfully, I love this book. I love this series. I cannot wait to read the third book. It just... I'm so ready. So this book follows our main character Morrigan Crow. She is turning 12 I believe and on the eve of her birthday she is said to die. She is a cursed child and everything that goes wrong within the town she gets blamed for even if it's like something absolutely crazy like bad weather. <laughs> um, so she is prepared to die on the eve of her 12th birthday but Luckily, a man called Jupiter North comes knocking on her door and whisks her away to become his apprentice so that she can be inducted into this thing called the Wondrous Society in the land of Nevermore. To be able to get into this Wondrous Society, she needs to complete a series of trials where she can sort of develop her powers that she is supposed to have and sort of get to know what the world is like. This book was such a fun book. It is a middle grade, yes, but it does not read like one. It's definitely mature in a way. Um, it doesn't feel as childish as you would expect. And it's also quite dark in some places, which I was not expecting. And it kind of like took me a, a surprise. Um, so yes, if you are sort of like umming and ahhing about getting this book, please just pick it up and read it. You will enjoy it. Absolutely, I promise you, and if you don't, then you can come at me totally prepared for that. But honestly, it was such an amazing read. I loved it. I really enjoyed the second book as well. It touches a lot of sort of serious topics as well, which I think is really important for younger readers to understand. So yes, definitely pick up Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. It's incredible. So coming in at number six, we have... The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. I loved it. So in this we follow our main character Alessandra who has a idea to get married to the Shadow King, kill him and then rule as queen. So she is hell bent on getting married to this king and ruling over the world basically. Um, and she doesn't want anything to stop in her way. Things sort of happen where she realizes that maybe she is not the only other person who is trying to kill the king. This was so cool and interesting and just so sassy and fun and I just had like a good old time reading this. Like people can trash it as much as they want. I just had a good old guilty time reading this book. It was so good. 
Um, Alessandra is such a sassy and sort of take no punches type of girl. She is very interesting to read about and I really love the fact that she had a hobby that was not like reading or writing or painting or something like that. She designs all of her own clothing and she sews them herself which I thought was such an interesting hobby for a main protagonist in a YA fantasy to have. Um, so I really enjoyed reading about that. And the Shadow King, whose name I can't remember, um, he was quite interesting to read about as well. Um, I did find that he was just a little bit sort of underwritten in my opinion, um, underdeveloped in a way, but I still really enjoyed him and he was quite fun to read about. Uh, so yes, if you are after a just like fun, easy YA sort of fantasy romance, then definitely pick this up. So, coming in at number 5 we have Fortuna Sworn by KJ Sutton. This is a dark fae romance and it was the first one that I have read actually and oh boy, it was amazing. So in this we follow our main character Fortuna Sworn who is in fact a nightmare and she and a nightmare is basically a mythical being that has the power to make you see your worst nightmares. So basically, if you're scared of spiders, you are covered in spiders. Um, and she, at the beginning of this novel, is trying to find her brother who has been missing for two years. She has no leads, she has no sort of clues as to where he could have gone, until she is approached by a tall, dark fae who says, I know where he is and I can take you to him on one condition, you have to marry me. So she marries him and then gets taken to where her brother is and it is such a crazy world of a ride. This is definitely a dark series. Do not like take that uh, warning uh, kindly. It is dark. There are some pretty dark themes throughout this book. Anyway, it was a crazy ride. I really, really enjoyed it. Please pick this up if you're after a dark fae romance, um, but do be warned of the trigger warnings. It's 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 quite interesting. <laughs> All right, coming in at number four, we have Aurora Rising by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. This is the first book in the Aurora Cycle series, and oh my gosh, this is incredible. Okay, so this is a YA sci-fi um, sort of space book. <laughs> so in this we follow our main character Tyler Jones who is meant to be the best of the best at his sort of space academy that he attends. And on the day of his graduation he discovers a distress signal coming from a ship that is said to have been missing for over 200 years. He goes to check it out and discovers that there is a girl stuck in a cryopod and she is still alive. So in rescuing her he becomes late to his own graduation ceremony and ends up having to pick the last sort of people that are stuck at the very bottom and aren't the best of the best. So this is a ragtag team of very interesting people. There is like a, a weird sort of half robot human thing and then there's a hot space elf and then there's a little uh human girl who's very very mute basically as well as his sister and a best friend as they are going on their very first mission together aurora the girl that he discovered in the cryopod decides to stow away on their ship to get away from the government and then it just sparks this whole crazy whirlwind of a ride where they're trying to escape the government and they're not entirely too sure why and it's just crazy. This book was the first book that made me cry this year. The ending ripped my heart out and I just... <sighs> Please read this, okay? It is a little bit cringy, it is a little bit sort of eye-rolly, but once you get past that and start getting into like the more serious bits of it, it was so good. Please just pick this up. Honestly, it's so good. Coming in at number three, we have a book that should probably be no surprise to anybody. Um, that is going to be The Deal with the Elf King by Elise Cover. This is a, another sort of dark fae slash dark elf fae romance. I said fae twice. <laughs> 
Um, but this book was just released this year and I read it within like five days of it being released and it follows our main character Luella who lives in this sort of town that is near where the elves live and she is the town's healer and in this town there is this sort of deal that they have with the elves that every hundred years they can come and pick a human queen to sort of take back to the elf lands and she will help sort of rejuvenate the land and help with their natural 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 stuff so far where luella is living and in the time period that she's living in there is no human queen who has come forward yet so it is a bit of a mystery and everyone's getting a little bit uh stressed out about that because you know they are supposed to have a human queen for the elves and they don't have one so when the elf king comes to pick his queen he decides to randomly pick Luella because they don't have anyone else so we follow Luella as she is dealing with this guy who's just like sort of kidnapped her and taken her to his kingdom and she's dealing with very snooty elf royals and having to deal with magic and stuff like that it was such such a good book. I gave it five out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. It was, uh, it was so good. The characters are definitely what made this book. I really enjoyed it as well as the world. The world is very interesting and I'm excited to see more of this world. Um, I don't believe that there's going to be a dedicated series to this world, but I do know that Elise Cova is sort of releasing, um, books that are set within this world so the next book that she's releasing i think is a dance with a rogue elf or a rogue fae or something along those lines um and it's set in the same place so i'm really interested to see how much more we can discover the, about the world um the characters in this were incredible i really really enjoyed luella she was very um sort of stubborn in a way that made her sort of um uh, she was very hell-bent on sticking to her job as the town's healer and she didn't want to leave them alone and she was really really strong about her opinion of that and I really enjoyed that because half the time when you're reading these sort of fey romance books the girls are sort of like no I don't want to go with you but starts to go with them anyway so I really liked that she was fighting against him the whole entire time and I just, oh, I love Luella. She was such a strong character and I just enjoyed her so much. So if you have not read this, please do pick it up. You will enjoy it. Trust me. All right, the second book, Almost to the Top. I probably shouldn't include this on the list because it is a sequel, but I just have to include it anyway. And that's going to be Aurora Burning, which is the second book in the Aurora Cycle series by J. Christopher and Amy Kaufman. Aurora Cycle. So this is obviously the sequel. Can't go into too much detail about it, but oh my god. The ending had me in pain, okay? Pain. I was distraught. I kid you not when I say I literally threw the book across the room because of the ending. And if you have read this, you will understand what I'm talking about. It hurt real bad and I don't know how they're going to fix it and I know I mentioned that this was probably going to have a third book come out next year I realize now after somebody commented on it saying oh I didn't know that they were releasing the third book um they're not they haven't actually announced anything about the third book so it was an oopsie on my behalf I'm just too excited for the third book um but yeah this oh my god it hurts so bad Let's just say, do not go into the series thinking that you're going to have favourites because they will not last. That's all I want to say, and plus this is my favourite because my hot space elf, Cal, is on the front cover. Just look at him. Isn't he just gorgeous? I don't know how they're going to come back from this. I really don't. I really, really don't. But I need to know. Like, now. So, yeah. The character development in this is really really good as well the character relationships in this is really well as well like from a romance standpoint as well as a friendship standpoint i really really love this book so good so good pick this series up please please and now we have the top book of 2020 
I don't think this is going to be a surprise for anyone really, especially if you've been watching my channel for a little while, but I just have to, this, this is definitely 100% the top book. So drum roll please. It's a very, very bad drum roll, but anyway. Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. Once again, probably no surprise. This is probably going to be on a few people's top lists for the year and it just, it deserves it in my opinion. So this is Sarah J Mass's first book in a new um, adult fantasy series. So in this we follow our main character Bryce Quinlan who is a sort of at the beginning of this a very uh, sporadic um, party girl. She does you know, she goes out clubbing every single night, she hooks up with whoever she wants to, and then something very tragic happens to her that sort of sends her into a crazy spiral and is then sort of sucked into a murder investigation. So the uh, government officials, I guess you could say, um, decide that they want her help because she is linked to the murders. Um, they want her to help the sort of government try and discover who these killers are and because it is such a dangerous mission they send a angel to be her bodyguard throughout this investigation. So we have the second main character Hunt Alathar I think is how you pronounce the last name. Once again we have the Sarah J Maz uh, character names which are always difficult to pronounce. But we have dark and brooding Hunt Alathar who is dealing with a bit of his own sort of grievances and things like that. This book is so much more than that very vague synopsis that I just gave. Honestly, this book was such a wild ride. The first, I want to say like 200 pages is a bit of a bit of a slog to get into because you're getting thrown with uh, world building and world lore and, and um, sort of characters every like left, right and centre and it's a bit of a crazy sort of experience and then once you get into like the murder investigation it becomes a lot more solid and the plot starts to you know grab your attention more. I love this book. Once again Sarah J Mass is just the best person for writing character relationships and I don't mean like romance. She's obviously good at writing romance. There's no doubt about that but friendships is something that she excels at to the highest point. She makes the best friendships and she knows exactly what to do in order to make the friendships hurt you in a way. Um, so I just, this book, this book, it hurts. This book really, really, really hurts. It is a hard book to read towards the end. It is not for the lighthearted towards the end. It just tears your heart out rips it up in front of you and force feeds it back to you and then rips it out one more time. So it's definitely one that is, oh, it just, it hurts, but it was so good and I cannot wait for the next book. Plus, look at this cover. Just like, look at it. Just look at it. Look at that gold foiling. It's amazing. Plus, it's a chunky one. So, you know, you can say that you've read this really big chunky book when you read it. So, yeah. Please go and pick this up if you haven't, um, but if you are definitely not a fan of fantasy, I don't think you should probably start with this one. <laughs> Alrighty, so there we have it, my top 10 books of 2020. Oh, that was a struggle, okay? It was such a struggle and I am so happy that I finally managed to pick out the top 10. Trying to do a top 20 was just, just a, just a no. Let's just not do that. Let's not try that. <laughs> So let me know if you guys agree with any of the books that I have mentioned in this video. Please let me know what your top 10 are down below in the comments. I would love to know so I can add some to my TBR. Um, let me know what you thought of this video. Give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you would like to see more of me. I do know that I haven't been active on here very much but I promise that I will be back with a whole bunch of new videos for you to watch so please subscribe so you don't miss out. If you'd like to see more of me as well then do check out my Twitter, Instagram, um, Goodreads and everything else that I have listed down below in the description box. There is always links in there that you can find so yeah be sure to check that out and I will see you guys in another video later on.